must have done it on my personal instead of Harry's. So when I popped up on the screen originally and it said Jen Litz, I was like, uh oh, <laughs> something's wrong. <laughs> something's wrong. It should say Harry Schumacher. So <laughs> yeah, let's see. They talked about taste of product. Yes. Technical difficulties. <laughs> and he's like, all right, I'm just going to scrap this whole entire beginning. <laughs> I'm sure he will. Yeah, we have to talk about him when he's not here. That's one of our tropes. You know, but since we're not asking him to scrap any of it, then uh, then yeah, it'll probably stay in. It's only yeah. when we ask him to cut something <laughs> that it makes its way out of the cutting room floor. Oh, man. You know, Harry, he's got a tough life, Jordan. <laughs> Bumbling yeah, around F1 races. Exhausted from F1. <laughs> Guys, yeah. I've parted too much. Although I'm yeah. sure it was. I mean, can you imagine Vegas on top of Vegas? I mean, that's what F1 in Vegas was. Like two Vegases <laughs> at the same time. I can see how that would get a little cray. Yeah, it sounded like a, like a mess from everything I read. Yeah. Leading up to it and, you know, people had tickets and... You know, the race didn't start till 2 a.m. And they're like, okay, you got to go. And oh, damn. I didn't realize that. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. yes. Now I can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me give you the, you know, the official welcome. Um, today on the show, we have, am I saying it right, Clement Pappas? Yeah, Pappas. Um, Pappas. But yeah, you got Clement right, which awesome. is more than I can say for 99% of the people I, I meet. Awesome. So uh, CEO of Philly-born Stateside Vodka, whose vodka-based RTDs are taking the Northeast by storm. Um, and I think we were reported just last week that you guys, with, with the Surfside, you're growing quadruple digits in scans, seeing better velocities in New York and New Jersey than even high noon. And I think you guys have passed the 1 million case mark, if I'm correct, right, with with this one, the Surfside? We have. Yeah, we um, we just passed it on a year to date basis. Um, we're at like 1.1, nice. a little bit more than 1.1. So, yeah, it's been exciting. Cool. Well, thank you. Welcome to the pod. Thank you for being here, especially right before Thanksgiving. I know it's Thanks very for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Well, take us back to the beginning. You know, how did this all start? Right. Um, when did you start Stateside Vodka? Why did you start Stateside Vodka? Lots of vodka brands out there and you guys have managed to break through. So take us back to how it all started. Yeah. So um, sort of referenced earlier, but I grew up in my family business, which was a non-alc business. So we were basically private label, you know, store brand juices, ShopRite brand cranberry juice, for example, was one of our products. And, um, you know, it was it's a long story. You don't have time for it on this pod, but um, wound up selling that company in like 2012, had, you know, several other family members. And I stayed on for a little while um, for the new owners. I, I sort of ran the subsidiary and then you know, as these things go, um, sort of decided to part ways. And, um, you know, fortunately for me, Bev out was not written into my non-compete. So mm -hmm. I was, <laughs> I was able to, um, kind of explore some different options and, um, met my partners, Matt and Brian Quigley, and they had a business plan for vodka and, um, just thought it was great. Thought the guys were great. Thought the product that Matt was sort of self-taught and the branding that he put together and the product was awesome. And, yeah, the timing was right. It was a, a big demand for um, craft spirits in, in particular. And we thought there was kind of a missing piece, which was like, there are all these craft spirits that were mostly brown liquors, but there was like nobody making vodka. And of course, you know, vodka is pretty popular. And I do get some cues of like the, the Tito's kind of coming at Tito's a little bit. Yeah. Was that ever part of the thrust? Um, you know, kind of, sort of, I think. Nowadays, it's like whether you want to be compared to Tito's or not, you're going to be. They've just dominated the category and and they're so huge and they're so successful. Um, but yeah, I mean, our thought was, um, you know, Tito's was kind of a craft, but sort of, you know, basic and kind of campy and, um, you know, sort of lovable in that regard. But we, we wanted something that was a little more of a premium, a little more of a step up, a little more sophisticated. Um, so we put a lot into the package and the liquid and, you know, the branding and all that to really kind of make it like a trade up. like. You know, and and we've seen where a lot of people will have a party and they'll they'll buy, you know, a couple handles of Tito's, but then they'll buy a fifth of state side and put that in the drawer and save it for themselves. <laughs> That's the good stuff hmm. for them. Right? Save it for themselves. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> nice, nice. So then where were you know, from that to Surfside, which of course uses stateside vodka, which is great because you actually have it's not just, you know, any vodka, it, it's a premium vodka. So where did the idea from this come from or for this come from? And why do you think it's taken off like it has? Yeah, so we, you know, uh, we never plan to get into the RTD business, but of course, you know, the world has changed a lot in the last seven or eight years in this category. And, um, 
you know, we, we kind of saw an opportunity, um, you know, to, to get into the RTD business. We started with our stateside vodka soda uh, in 2021, and we just kind of dipped our toe in the water. We got it co-packed and, you know, we ordered like 10 trucks of product and it, it sold out in two weeks. Oh, and wow. then we were like, at that point, you couldn't get any cans or, or any line time for that matter. And we were kind of like sold out for the season. And so, you know, we kind of went, um, you know, back to the drawing board, looked at supply chain, but also uh, my partner, Matt, um, who's really, you know, really the creative one in our company. Um, he kind of dreamed up this, the branding. Uh, he did all the graphic design on his own. We worked together on the name and, and then obviously the formulation, but it was really Matt's idea. And we just kind of felt like, hey, there wasn't really a, a tea um, product out there that spoke to us. And we obviously thought the vodka, um, certainly our vodka would be the best base for our product. And, you know, we wanted something that was a hundred calories. A lot of the offerings out there, are a lot higher calories, a lot higher sugar, um, kind of heavy. So, you know, um, we put it out and it's just been, I mean, listen, we thought it was a good idea or we wouldn't have done it, but it's yeah. just been like rocket ship. Yeah. Have you been able to keep up with supply? I assume you still co-pack, right? We do. We're, we're mostly using um, City, um, who, okay. you know, probably a lot of listeners will be familiar with. Big big Packer did a lot for Mark Anthony, um, owned by Paps now. But um, yeah, we're, you know, I, I think the hardest part is forecasting. So we kind of forecasted like four to five times growth and we wound up at like six to seven times growth this year. So I think we did a lot better job, but we, we still missed some cases uh, that we could have had. Was, was there a viral moment in Surfside's ascension or was it really just word of mouth and just growing and growing and growing? Or was there one point where it just was like, oh man, this has turned into a monster? Yeah, um, I, I can't point to any one particular moment. I mean, I think in a couple different places, it's it's taken off. Um, the Jersey Shore in particular has been, has been an area where it's been a really hot um, commodity. And then the other thing, the Phillies Stadium, if you guys have ever been to any of the Phillies games now, it's, I mean, we're literally outselling light beer in the Philly Stadium. It's, it's crazy, yeah. um, the amount of stuff. So a lot of people will tell me, hey, I had my first surf side at the stadium, and then I saw it here, and... You know, that sort of thing. So that, that's been a big, uh, big win for us. Yeah. So it helps that Philly's been pretty good in sports lately, too. <laughs> big time. Yeah. Big OK. Time. <laughs> Definitely a surreal moment, like going to the World Series last year and looking around and just seeing all these people drinking Surfside cans. It's like, all right, I, I thought we would win, but uh, there was, I guess there wasn't you know quite that much magic uh, in the can. <laughs> yeah, it's your fault. <laughs> we, were, we were close. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. You were close. My my uh my son and my husband went to the the game in Houston, so yes. yeah. And my sister texted me and she was like, "So they lost." I was like, "Yeah, but you know they were still nicer to my kids being Phillies fans in Houston than they were to Ted Cruz." So. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. But uh, well, this is interesting too because you know I you know being from or with my husband being from right outside Philly, he's got bartender friends who told us like, this thing is selling like crazy in the on-premise is, did, did this get built in the on-premise? Like we talk about brands traditionally. Yeah. And, um, you know, there seems to be a, like a feeling in the industry that RTDs or whatever, more of an off-prem thing. And I, I don't know if that was born out of the, the kind of the COVID phenomenon, but we've had really strong uh, on-prem. So it's, yeah. you know, upwards of 30% of our volume is on-prem and you know again it's a, it to your point it's a great place to build the brand um our liquid is so unique and um you know we're really proud of it and you know getting that liquid to lips obviously on-prem is a, is a key you know place to drive trial and and get people into the brand so it's been huge for us well i have to ask about maybe the most obvious question from the last two weeks, <laughs> you've had a competitor <laughs> come into your direct space, sit like right next to you. Right. So obviously Boston has a brand called sun cruiser that has the same specs that's coming out next year in a bunch of States. Is that, how do you guys feel about that? Right. Is this a good thing for the category? Is it going to directly cannibalize? Do you care? So we're, you know, we're flattered, um, I guess, but, um, <laughs> I guess. you know, I think, um, we, we, um, you know, I think we always kind of figured that when, when we saw that, you know, the market was receiving Surfside as well as it was, we kind of figured it was a matter of time before other people kind of figured it out. And, you know, what we've been seeing, you know, I don't know your guys' point of view on it, but 
we've been seeing all kinds of malt based products that are basically just coming right at twisted tea and, and maybe they're borrowing a non out trademark or, you know, something like that, but basically just twisted tea knockoffs and they're, they're all kind of coming at the King and, and, and missing, um, you know, and, and I don't know, there was an article today you guys put out, but um, it seems like in general, you know, twisted tea is just dominates, you know, 90 plus percent market share right. uh, in that category. And, you know, this was really meant to be something different. And I think, you know, we've shown that it is something different. It's not just grabbing share from, twisted but um you know kind of across the board and yeah so um we're not surprised um what can i say you know we're not like thrilled about it but at the same point you know we we live in a free market economy and it's you know kind of only a matter of time and we're going to keep doing what we're doing and um we just have to out compete and you know we're confident we can with Surfside, um is it primarily in the markets it's in currently is it primarily sold in the liquor channel does it kind of sit on its own away from twisted tea so it kind of has more of a draw to it or is it you know next to other malt based hard teas in in that channel yeah and so you know most of the markets we're in and kind of the mid-atlantic and northeast it is liquor store you know and mo mostly independents right chains are not allowed to sell our product um in those markets so it it there isn't kind of a cookie cutter answer right because they're all independent so it's they all choose to merchandise how they choose to merchandise but I would say typically we're finding ourselves more in kind of the RTD space than we are, you know, sitting next to Twisted. Okay. Do you think that's? Um, you know, I think if if we're in the cold box and if we get decent display, I'm not terribly worried. Um, I think, you know, we um, we we certainly are getting some Twisted Tea drinkers to trade up to our product, but I don't think that's like the whole game. Right. Yeah. So we're, we're definitely getting, you know, people that have kind of seltzer fatigue and they, they want something that's not bubbly and, and something different. Um, we're getting, you know, some vodka drinkers. I think we're getting some Chardonnay drinkers, mm -hmm. getting a lot of females into, um, you know, this brand uh, that probably were never twisted tea drinkers. Yep. So um, it's, it's pulling from a variety of places. Yeah. Is there anything, I mean, what would you say is the single most compelling thing about Surfside, right? Is it we've we've written a lot about the flat boost trend this year, especially like you said, seltzer fatigue in the aftermath of that. Is it so? Is it driven by that? Is it driven by the calorie point? Is it driven by you know all of the above? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I think um, you know I think some of those things are sort of price of entry to the party at this mm -hmm. point for a lot of consumers. Like just like you're you're not going to be in the conversation if you're not 100 calories for for a huge swath of of the consumer base out there. So um, I think, you know, that's like one of those things that's important to have, but it's not enough. Um, again, I give Matt a lot of credit for the branding. I think the branding has really resonated with people that kind of retro surfer vibe works really well with this brand. And um, like, we've actually we have like people on Instagram sending us pictures of their surfside tattoos um, that they put on their bodies. So it's very, Damn. it's all very have flat. to drink it for life now. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, but yeah, there's a lot of brand intense, uh, loyal, um, you know, uh, intense loyalty around the brand and excitement around it. And I think it's that combination of things. The liquid really delivers. And we're really proud of that. We spent a lot of time formulating it and getting it right and um, went through many, many iterations to to try to really get it so that it was delicious, but it was still crushable, but it wasn't too sweet, but it wasn't too tart and, you know, hitting the calories and all those things. So you know, I think um, that's really important. And it's just, you know, it's it's really drinkable and 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 easy to, you know, you can drink quite a few of them um, if you're, you know, out watching a game or at a barbecue or whatever the case may be. So um, I think those are kind of, you know, the keys where some of the other products out there are, are great, but they're different occasions. They're more cocktail heavy. You might not want to drink five or six of those in a session. You were giving your partners um, a lot of props. But I want to ask you, you know, you were talking about the liquid, how much of your non-alk background and background in juice, you know, plays into what y'all came out with? Yeah, no, for sure. Then, you know, my old company are, we had to go copy stuff all the time, right? So you kind of like, <laughs> if Ocean Spray came out with like Cran Blueberry, right? We had to run into the lab and figure out how to make a Cran Blueberry. And so, you know, definitely learn a lot of tricks of the trade there and, um, I'll just say that there's definitely some secret sauce. I mean, I'm not saying companies with resources can't figure out how to make a, you know, a, pr a product 
you know, similar to ours, but um, it, it wasn't easy. And there are, you know, several kind of little um, tweaks and tricks and processes and ingredients and stuff that go into it. So yeah, uh, make it taste like tea, right? It tastes yeah. like iced tea without me saying yeah. it's great or it's not. It tastes like iced tea, right? So yeah, that's that's good, I would think, <laughs> right? For people who like iced tea. Um, but, you know, you were talking too about it being crushable and occasion driven. So what happens in the winter to this brand, right? Yeah, so we're, you know, um, we're still seeing a lot of activity around sports and, and mm -hmm. tailgating and that kind of thing. But, you know, there's there's no question there's a seasonal peak. Um, and we're we're seeing peak consumption in the summer. We'll see as we start to add geographies, how much that, evens out a little bit, but I, I, you know, no matter what, I think, you know, that's just, that's the world we live in, right. Whether it's beer or water for that matter or anything else, there's just more consumption yeah. um, in the summer. So uh, I, you know, that said, it's not like we're going to zero, but we're, right. we're seeing kind of, you know, peak to trough. If, if, if the average month is a hundred, the peak is maybe one fifty. the trough is maybe 50. Um, so we're seeing that seasonal, you know, typical pattern. Sure, sure, sure. And then, you know, you mentioned markets. How many markets are you all in? And are you looking to, I mean, do you one day want to be national? And what does that look like, the path to that? Yeah, we we do. Um, we we think, um, you know, particularly with the, with the Surfside brand, we have an opportunity to make a national brand out of this. And I think, you know, we felt like we were a little late to the party on the vodka sodas. I mean, our, our vodka sodas done like really well in the Philly area. Um, we've got almost a 30 share of vodka soda in the whole state of Pennsylvania. Wow. Um, so, you know, and, um, Oh, one thing I should get a plug in for ourselves. We, uh, <laughs> we just, um, we just overtook Gallo as the top RTD supplier in the state of Pennsylvania between oh, nice. Southside and state side. Cool. Um, so we're excited wow. about that. Um, but no, I mean, you know, uh, everybody's got a vodka soda out now, right? There's a million of them and, you know, ours is great. Um, but we didn't, sort of expand and get that national before everybody else did. And I think, you know, we want to try to stay ahead of that in this category. And you know, obviously other guys are going to enter, but it's definitely part of our strategy to try to be a first mover as, in as many major markets as we can. Mm -hmm. So you're in what, less than 20 right now or? Yeah, about, I mean, it seems like it's changing every day, but yeah. we're at like, I think 16 at last count. It's yeah. And do you tend to be with wine and spirits wholesalers or beer wholesalers or? That's a great question. And, um, you know, it's evolved because when we started, we were a vodka company. So we we're with wine and spirits guys. Um, although we actually did go with um, Standard, who's the um, Molson Coors distributor in Delaware. And we've been with them from from day one. And they've been a great partner for us. Um, but in general, now, as we open up new markets, we are going almost all beer networks. Mm. Um, and that's just, just think, because, yeah. I mean, we just think it's it's the right route to market for the RTDs. And again, I mean, like our partner in New Jersey is Fedway. They're awesome. They're unbelievably great partner, and they've done an amazing job with us in New Jersey. But I would say, on average, um, you know, the big wine and spirits distributors are not terribly interested in this category, and I, I don't think they have, um, you know, the same capabilities, the the same levels of service, the, you know, same touch points, the merchandising, you know, all of those things that make beer distributors great at what they do. So are you expanding exclusively with, with Surfside right now, or are you taking the whole portfolio in, in some areas? Yeah, no, it, it'll vary somewhat by market. And, you know, there's some like control States where, you know, the vodka will go control, but the RTDs will go, you know, beer distribution. So it sort of varies by market. We, we're, you know, Surfside's the priority. So that's going everywhere. And then depending on the market, the other brands will will come along or be phased in. What uh, what have you learned about the brand as you kind of get further away from home? And sometimes it doesn't, you know, go into market necessarily with the, the base vodka and just kind of is there on its own. Yeah. I mean, we, we think the brand really stands on its own and it's funny because like we started with stateside vodka and then you know we evolved and and surfside was kind of our latest offering but you know when we launch a new market it's probably going to be the opposite direction where you know, <laughs> we, we launch with surfside and then we hope that people you know kind of look at the back of the can and go oh this is made with this great vodka it must be really good and you know hopefully that kind of gives us the halo on the vodka because i think that's you know that's going to be 
um, the order of operations. But, you know, we, we think certainly the brand stands on its own. And even if people don't know what stateside vodka is, we still do show that it's made with a premium vodka. And we do think that makes a difference uh, in the in the quality of the final product. Yeah. So I'm curious, like long term to to your point of looking at the can and saying, oh, this must be really good vodka. Long term is the bigger play, the vodka or the RTD? Jeez, if I had a crystal ball, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we it's like, which is your favorite child? Um, yeah, they're, they're all equally favorites. Um, but, <laughs> um, you know, I think what I would say is I think we have to execute on Surfside because that's just the biggest opportunity that's in front of us. And I think you know, we think we have great brands in, in vodka and vodka soda, and that that's all of our product lines at this point. But, um, you know, those other categories are a lot more crowded where, you know, up until a week or two ago with the Boston beer announcement, we we're kind of the only one playing in this sort of small sandbox. So um, we, we think we have the bigger opportunity there. And then, you know, that'll give us the platform and, and the ability to, um, you know, bring our other brands but also you know innovation yeah so what what are you guys cooking up for 24 <laughs> yeah come on <laughs> um well we'll um we we do have a few things we're not um quite ready to announce but i promise you we'll be the first to know probably early in the new year but um we're, we're definitely gonna have some um some new uh product launches and line extensions cool 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 maybe like seasonally oriented or yeah okay, no, okay. probably not <laughs> <laughs> all right cool let's play 20 questions though yeah. <laughs> i was just i was just telling jordan that we were playing 20 questions because i have a five-year-old and an eight-year-old we were playing 20 questions with them last night and my son who's the eight-year-old his that we were supposed to guess was black hole and i was like <laughs> how am i ever gonna... you know so but i should be proud right but i did not get black hole <laughs> oh <my goodness. laughs> anyway so 20 questions top of mind um but well, yeah. my, my kid spent the night throwing up so oh it could be I'm worse. So sorry i hope you don't get it <laughs> me too make for a great pod though right <laughs> every time but you know what like i guess it's probably different for dudes but I, I think i speak for a lot of moms when we're like we'll probably get it but at least we'll lose a pound <laughs> dudes yeah. probably don't think that way that never I'm crosses my mind I, I still ha I still haven't lost the COVID nineteen, so I could I could use whatever help I can get. Right, the COVID nineteen. Uh, that's good. Well, what else? I mean, um, anything else, Jay? Um, I think I wanted to ask about marketing. You know, as you yeah. gear up for new innovation and then expanding. Um, you know, how do you market in these these new areas? I mean, number one is is liquid the lips for sure. Um, that's you know, the, you know, the single biggest thing is just getting people to try the product. It's, um, you know, we almost can't sample enough. So as much as we can do that, whether it's, you know, in-store tastings or at events or, you know, any opportunity at golf course, you know, whatever opportunity we have. So that's kind of king. Um, that that's the, the core key pillar for everything else we do. And then, you know, um, like I said, we, we had a great, uh, partnership with the Phillies, not clear we can replicate that in every market or even, you know, with every baseball team or sports team for that matter. But those are definitely things that we'll be exploring if we think there is an opportunity for good partnerships there. Um, you know, that that is something that uh, we'll be evaluating on a market by market basis. And then, you know, your your typical stuff, um, you know, billboards, airplane pulls, those kinds of things. Well, so, and of course, marketing and sampling takes money. Are you guys just, you're privately owned by a couple of individuals, basically? Yeah, that's it. My Really, myself and my brother are the primary investors. I mean, again, we we sold our family business. So this mm -hmm. is kind of our, our second act. And um, yeah, you know, we're, we're well capitalized and, um, you know, look, feel like we're in pretty good shape. So good, good, good. And then um, can you share like how many cases you guys expect to finish this year at? Yeah, so I think um, you know the the surf side we think will be about one point two, one point three million um, all all in depletions, and then um, stateside vodka soda will be another four hundred or so. Okay, um, in that range, and then our vodka, of course, you know, is much lower volume, but um, you know, obviously higher proof and and higher price. That'll be like close to fifty thousand. Cool. What are what are your favorite holiday cocktails to make with stateside because i got people coming tomorrow 
<laughs> and I need to be festive, okay? Uh, let's see. Festive <laughs> for the holidays. Well, how early do you start? I mean, Bloody Mary's um, always good in the yeah. morning. Me yeah. or <laughs> the rest? I mean, I wouldn't normally be drinking on a pod, but I got to go find a ham after this. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and other things. So... <laughs> Um, now, one of my favorites, I don't know if it's holiday or festive, but we have one that we do in our tasting room called Dirty and Gritty, which is um, we infuse the, our vodka with jalapeno. Oh, nice. And so you have to like, you have to cut it and get rid of all the seeds. Otherwise, it'll it'll ruin the vodka. But um, you put the jalapeno slices in the vodka, let it let it go for like a day or two, depending on how much intensity you want. And then we make a dirty martini with it. Oh, so nice. we call it dirty, dirty and Gritty. That and it's got like good. a nice nice little kick to it um that's been that's always one of my favorites yeah okay. i need to visit that tasting room so i'm sure Come you'll get by. a lot of traffic yeah um yeah dep- i mean depends on the time of year and on uh, we're open like um well now no actually now we're open tuesday tuesday through saturday so oh. yeah please next time you come back to visit the in-laws for sure. Well, well, the problem is now they're like snowbirds, so they go to Naples, Florida for half the year, right? So when we visit them, they're in Florida, so we never get back to that area anymore. And I miss it because all of his friends that he grew up with are there, you know? So you probably, I mean, we probably know some of the same people. We could so. go down the name game rabbit hole, probably. Yeah. I'm, sure your, I'm sure your listeners would enjoy that. Right? They're like, I don't know who the hell this person is. But they're good people, guys. They're probably, even though they're Philly adjacent. It's cool. Um yeah, I think I think that's it. So, anything else that you wanted to share, or um, I don't I don't think so. I mean, I think we covered everything. Really appreciate you guys bringing me on, and um, you know, look forward to uh, to uh, hearing my own voice on a podcast. That'll be an interesting. <laughs> that's interview. always fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cringeworthy. <laughs> But it's that way for everybody. Like my son heard himself the other day, and he was like, "Why do I sound like that?" And I was like, "Get ready, buddy." That's yeah. how it is for the rest of your life. <laughs> so, but it's universal. So, well, y'all have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you for coming on. That was really great. And uh, we'll definitely be watching. So please keep us posted. Appreciate it. Thank you guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Cheers. You too.